If you're making films or shooting video, it's critical to have great sounding audio in order to retain your audience. And the traditional way to do that is to have the microphone close to the talent so it can pick up the talent without picking up a lot of background noise. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now with this Shure SM81 condenser microphone. But sometimes your video production just doesn't allow for having a microphone in frame. And so you need an invisible microphone. Well, there's some choices there. And one of the choices is to get really small. And so you could use a lapel microphone like this one right here, this Audio-Technica, which stays close to the talent, is relatively inexpensive, and works well. But sometimes even that isn't small enough. You just can't have a microphone of any kind in frame, or you can't put a wire on your talent. So if that's not small enough, maybe we should get big. This video I'm going to review the Audix SCM81 shotgun condenser microphone. And we'll take a look at it, we'll take a listen to it, and you can determine if this is the tool that would help take your videos and your film production to the next level. Hi friends, I'd like to introduce you to the Audix Shotgun Condenser Microphone. Now a shotgun microphone is a long mic like this, which is made to be extremely directional. So it is sensitive to the sounds coming off the front, but relatively insensitive to the sounds coming in from the sides and the rear. And the microphone is so long because there's a lot of acoustical filtering going on along the side of the microphone to block out the sounds that are coming in from the sides and the rear. And a shotgun microphone isn't necessarily more sensitive or have more reach than a standard microphone, but it does reject the background noise better than most microphones, therefore allowing for a longer microphone to subject distance and still getting clear sound without background noise intruding in. Now, it's relatively easy to create an omnidirectional microphone that listens to sound from everywhere that performs well. It's a challenge, however, to create a shotgun microphone or a very directional microphone that works well. And so shotgun microphones tend to be a bit of specialized devices, and the good ones tend to be a little bit expensive. Now, oftentimes in the land of video and film, when people think of shotgun microphones, they think of something along the lines of this, which is a camera-mounted microphone that terminates in a 8th inch plug, which will plug directly into your camera, and this sits on top of the camera and allows the camera to hear sounds that are just a little bit further away than the built-in mics on the camera would allow. And that's probably a pretty good solution if you're shooting things that are fairly close to the camera. But if your subject is, say, 8, 10 feet or more away, you need a microphone that's separated from the camera and closer to the subject. And that's what this Audix mic is all about. This Audix mic is a professional microphone that terminates in a three-pin balanced audio connector, like most professional microphones. So in most cases, it will require the use of a preamplifier before your camera. And this microphone is intended to be used on a stand or a boom pole, typically above the, the subject, above the actor, and just outside of your frame. So let's take a look at the mic, and um, after we're done with that, we'll take a listen to it, and I'll compare the sound of that mic to a couple other choices that you may have, such as a lavalier mic, and this Shure SM81 mic that's next to me here. Now I realize that this microphone is called a UEM81 and this is a Shure SM81 and that's totally coincidental. There's no relationship between these two mics aside from the fact that they both happen to be small diaphragm condensers. So the Audix mic here 
comes with a foam windscreen, which is easily removable, and a stand adapter, which is, of course, the correct diameter for this microphone. And it looks just like that. The microphone has a couple of switches on it. The first switch turns it on or off, and on the back side it's got a switch which is a high-pass filter, which, uh, if engaged, will cut out all of the low-frequency sounds below 150 hertz. So that would tend to diminish the sound of background rumble type noise from your air conditioning system and that sort of thing. Uh, the human voice doesn't have much energy down at those frequencies, and so if you're picking up dialogue from, uh, from your talent, it uh, won't impact that. It'll just clean up the sound. The microphone is made up of the element and the preamplifier unit, and they are detachable. You can unscrew the element from the preamplifier, like so, if you wanted to. And Audix does make a slightly shorter version of this microphone, which I believe is called the UEM81S. And so, at least in theory, you could remove that element and change it out with another one if you needed to or wanted to. You probably won't be doing that very often. Then, on the bottom side, there's another place where you can unscrew the microphone. Right here. And that comes off. And this holds a AA battery, which provides the power for this mic. And that's why there's an on-off switch, is to engage the power that drives the microphone. The AA battery in here will last for a very long time. And so, this is a battery-powered condenser microphone. It does not use phantom power, so you don't need to use phantom power on your mixer or preamplifier that's driving this unit. It has a standard balanced type connector on the back end of it for your audio output. And um, this mic sells for about $300. It is made out of aluminum, I believe. It's fairly lightweight. I was actually surprised at how lightweight this microphone is. I've used plenty of other Audix mics, and um, their mics tend to be fairly substantial in the hand. And so when I got this one, I thought, this is pretty light. It's um, not as heavy as I thought it would be. But I don't think that is necessarily a reflection of poor quality. I, the build quality appears to be just fine. Um, the top of it here, where the element actually is, is a little bit of a plastic ring. I would have, um, I believe it's plastic. I, I would have preferred to see that all aluminum. But um, nevertheless, it's a nice piece. And I think it performs relatively well. I was a little bit disappointed that it's battery powered because batteries don't last forever and phantom power alleviates that issue, but this is a battery powered mic and the battery does last for a very, very long time, so it's really not an issue. So I know what you're all probably thinking. Let's take a listen to it and see how it sounds. I'll compare the sound of this microphone to the sound of this Shure SM81 as well as to the lavalier mic and the in-camera mic, so you can see what kind of impact it makes. Now, the reason why I chose the Shure SM81 right here to compare against is not because this is the world's greatest vocal mic necessarily. However, it's a very good studio microphone that is somewhat renowned for having a nearly perfectly flat frequency response. And so the sound coming off of the Shure 81 next to me should be pretty darn accurate to true sound. And so you can listen to the Audix mic in comparison and see what kind of coloration that we get. Now, like I mentioned earlier, creating a extremely tight pattern shotgun microphone that sounds good is an engineering challenge. And so I would not, generally speaking, anticipate that a shotgun microphone is going to be an extremely good sounding microphone. You know, in the world of engineering, it's all a matter of compromises, and if you want extremely tight pattern, you usually have to pay the price somewhere else. But I'm relatively pleased with the performance of this mic, and perhaps uh, you will too. You can take a listen to it here in just a moment when um, I set this guy up, and we can listen to the difference between the Shure 81 and the UEM 81 shotgun microphone. Okay, we're back. 
Now I've got both of these microphones, the Shure SM81 and the Audix UEM81, right next to each other so you can compare the sound of the two. I'll switch back and forth between these two and I'll mark on screen down here which microphone we're listening to at the moment so you can get an idea as to the difference in sound quality between these two condenser microphones. Now of course these are two very different microphones made for different applications so I'm not saying that they should be comparable but it gives you an idea of the sound quality coming off of the Audix mic. Of course it would be a rather unusual situation to be close talking a shotgun microphone like this and so perhaps this isn't really a totally fair comparison but um, in the next episode here I'll move the mic into a position where it would probably normally be which would be just off of screen pointing down at me and so you can hear the difference there. Okay we're back. Now the shotgun microphone is just outside of frame up here and the Shure mic is, of course, still right in front of me. So now we can switch back and forth between these two, and you can compare the sound of a close mic high-quality microphone versus this shotgun microphone that is just outside of frame. And this is probably how you would normally use the Audix shotgun microphone. And so you can get an idea as to what your sound quality would be with this sort of setup. Now, just for further comparison purposes, I will compare the shotgun mic with the sound of the lapel microphone that I'm wearing. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, I've gotten rid of that Shure SM81 mic, and you are now listening to me on the audio technical lapel microphone that's attached to my collar, which is an ATR3350, an inexpensive lapel microphone. And that's going directly into the camera. You're also listening to me off of the Audix shotgun microphone up above and so this lets you compare the sound of the shotgun microphone versus the lapel for your video production. Now of course there's a big price difference between these two mics and they're very different tools. Now for the last example here I'm going to remove the lapel microphone and just use the mics that are built into the camera that we're using. I'm using a Canon Digital Rebel camera which I think actually has some very good microphones in its body. However, I am back about five or six feet from the camera and so that will certainly impact the sound quality that, that we're picking up. Okay, now what you're hearing is the sound of the Audix shotgun microphone up above compared to the sound of the Canon camera mics. They're just built into the body that are five or six feet back. Like I mentioned, I think that the mics that are built into the camera actually work quite well. However, when you get subjects that are somewhat far away from the camera, you, they really start to have their limitations. And so um, here is a place where you can hear the difference between these two choices. And I think that you'll probably agree that the shotgun microphone provides a better sound quality pickup than what comes straight off of the camera. Well, I hope that you found my review of the Audix shotgun condenser microphone to be helpful, and I hope that it helps you make a decision as to what you want to do to pick up audio for your video productions. Now, as one final comparison, right now I'm using the Shure SM58 vocal microphone, which is an industry standard dynamic microphone, and it's a great choice for picking up vocals if you can mic at a close distance. And so this is an inexpensive option that may work well for you also. At any rate, my name is Barry, and I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis-St. Paul Twin Cities area, and it's been my pleasure to bring you another episode of Sound Advice. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so YouTube lets you know of new fresh content, and share the video with your friends. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.